our ancient texts talk about Gandharva and Gandharva has been defined as Gandharvam Trividham Vidya Swaratal Padatmakam Swaratal and Pad these are the three main components of Gandharva that was supposed to be the classical music of the ancient times. Dhrupad in its completeness carries this tradition and explores and exploits all these three components beautifully in the music and it is embedded in the structure of Drupad. The structure that is three-tiered, Alap, Bandish and Laikari. This forms the composite whole in elaborating the Swara, the tone, the Thala, the beat with rhythm and meter and of course Pada the song text the entire gamut of the lyrical tradition that we have and how the Pada is enunciated so we can see that the aspect of Swara is fully explored in the Alap. Alap actually forms the melodic crux in its completeness. And then you have the Tala, the rhythmic intensification that follows in the Thrupa tradition very much because there are specific improvisations, the rhythmic intensification through the rendering of the Tala. And as I always say, Thrupa is not just a melodic tradition. It is also a lyrical tradition and that is found in the Pada, in the poetic content, but all together they form a complete unity. They are all unified together in the Swaratala Pada construction of the musical form of Drupad. Now, how does this happen? This is possible only through the music aesthetics that is embedded in the rendering of Ala, Bandesh and Laikari. And this is possible through proper tonal inflections of the sound, the swara, and all this happens in the canvas of Raga. Raga has its own characteristics, own discipline, own uh, regulative principles that operate every moment while we are singing or playing the Raga. And all these renderings have a character, have a style and Drupad evolved in so many different ways through the musical style which is found in the Banis, the four Banis. So we have the system of the Bani and the Giti. The, the Banis clearly have connection with the ancient Gitis 
which has been very clearly explained in Matanga's Brihad Deshi. So I'll talk about the Banis and Geetas later. Let me briefly illustrate the two main musical aesthetic terminologies the Surabheda and the Gamaka. They are very, very important in shaping the music that we find in Drupad on every levels of the performance, whether it's Alap, Bandish and Laikari. Now what is Surabheda? As I said that when we start to perform, the swara constitute the shrutis. Then we have the varna, we have the alankar, we have the gamaka, and we have the sthaya. Gamakas are in the context of the swaras, how you are making the swara create the beauty in the swara and there are so many different ways of tonal shakes and tonal embellishments that is to be found in the gamaka. Sthayas are actually embodies the raga and we have so many ways of decorating the raga with all the tonal articulation they are complex in character. So we have the 15 types of gamakas and 96 thayas that are explained in the Sangeet Shastra. Now, Shruti and Swara are very important in understanding, in delving deep into the tonality of a Drupad performance, more so in the Alap. And Alap, as I said, is an independent unity, is an independent system. And Alap, if one knows the Alap, one can make the Bandish rich with the knowledge of the Alap and the rendering of the alap, the bandish gets enriched through the process of alap and a lot of ideas can be taken from the alap. Similarly, a good bandish, where a good vagyakar composes a bandish, it is a raga capsule. So you can see that alap and bandish actually complement each other. They nourish each other and makes the music complete and beautiful. So now just notice how the Shrutis get manifested through the Swara in the Alap or in the rendering of the Raga. So my guru is to say that you never sing a Shruti. Shruti is a concept. And Swara is the percept. You are actually hearing the Swara. So when I start to sing, the point of attack, the Aghata, is the Shruti point. But what follows through the tonal shake, what follows in the resonance, is a Swara. And that is what we actually enjoy in the Raga. That is the realization of the sound, the Swara, and finally, Shruti and Swara is just the formal aspect in shaping the Raga. Finally, we experience the Nada that follows ultimately. The ultimate sound is the Nada. So this is how we get all the stages of 
experiencing sound experiencing rhythm experiencing the poetry the lyrics in the drupad tradition Now note is just the tonal inflection of the re makes rag shri it is almost atikomal This is a story. Now notice how the intonation of the re has changed. Now this is surbheda, the right articulation of the sound is necessary, and the raga is immediately projected. The raga takes the color, and the beauty emerges immediately. So that's also the beauty of swara that's why swara is also swayam rajate iti swara swara has its own autonomy if you have the tonal precision and if you have the feeling of the raga the the swara is going to emerge properly and all this is possible in the oral tradition of drupad where the guru shows you the right path and it's a lifelong dedication to keep your musical sadhana re Now see, I am not singing just the notes. My guru is to say, describe it. You have to describe the note. You have to describe the raga. You have to describe the phrases according to the mood of the raga. Sa. Imagine you see the horizon. it's early morning and the sun is going to rise there is some orange light in the horizon rana the sun appears it rises from the horizon rana rana
this is Raj Bhairo, wonderfully depicted. You see, I only have the sound. It's only an abstraction of the sound. My guru is to say it's the Amurtan ki upasana. It is a worship of the sound, shapeless, formless, yet you can describe, you can visualize through Rag Dhyana. So this is how Bhairo is pronounced. We call it the Argi Risha. So you are in the in the river, in the water, and you are offering your salutation to God, the Ar Argha. Rana na This is Shashtanga Vadhyayat. We are prostrating before the God. Lord Shiva is in the meditative posture. Parvati comes very quietly, offers the flowers to him and quietly goes away. So the right, right pronunciation of Rishabh, the right pronunciation of Dhaivat is important. This is Surbheda and you have to describe every Swara in details. The Gandhar tells you that this is Rag Darbari. Coming to the Banis, there is a saying, Jor Jor Se Khandar Bole, Madhur Bol Ko Nohar Lewe, Saans Badi Hai Gauhar Ki, Alap Chari Hai Dagur Ki. Now see how clearly the verse talks about the stylistic content 
of Drupad that rest in the Banis. Jor Jor Se Khandar Bole. It is forceful, there is ojas, there is vigor. There are subtle gamakas, tonal shakes, lot of mead. This characterizes the Dagarbani. In fact, Dagarbani is known for its alap, and of course, the renderings are systematic and soft. Even the laikari that follows. So this is the characteristic of Dagarbani. Alap chari hai Dagar ki. The Dagarbani gives you a complete framework in the melodic rendering. Saas bari hai gauhar ki. The clarity, the openness, the tonal precision and long sustaining notes characterize the Gauharvani. Now to understand the Banis you have to delve into the Geetis because Banis actually evolved during the time of Akbar when Tansen was there at that time, the legendary Tansen. And in fact, the musicians got their identity, their social identity, their socio-cultural position in the society was through the Banis. So they would suffix the, the Banis in their name as their identity, that such and such an artist is a Gawari, He's a Nauhari, he's a Daguri, he's a Khandari. So today in the 21st century, the Banis are redundant. Though the musical peculiarities stay intact, but the cultural identity is not important and they are redundant now. But still for understanding the musical culture, the musical status, the musical uh, character of Drupad, we have to know the Banis. And for a better understanding of the Banis, we have to understand what are the Geetis. You see, we have the five Geetis, Shuddha, Vinna, Gauri, Begaswara and Sadharani. Now, these Geetis are in the context of the Ragas, they are not just stylistic understanding or rendering of the music. Not just so. It is very important even to understand the personality, the character of the Raga. For example,
This is Marwa, it's very clear, this is the Shuddha Giti. Now you can associate the Gohar Bani with the Shuddha Giti for its clarity, for long sustaining notes. So immediately you know that Marwa is the Shuddha Giti Raga. Subtle gamakas, round phrases that characterize the Bhinna Giti. You find traces of that in the Dagarvani very clearly. Vegasura Giti, very clear in Sohani. Some ragas have this character. Also, Deshkar, you can't sing Deshkar very slowly. The character is Begaswara. It very clearly indicates. Now Harbani has some traces of the Begaswara and also the Carnatic tradition carries a lot of embellishments coming from the Begaswara Giti. Gauri Giti has some special heavy gamakas they call it the Ohati. The cheek is kept downwards and you have the heavy movements. This is a good example of Gauri Giti like uh, Rag Darbari has the Gauri character, very much so. And these heavy gamakas that you also find in the Khandarvani. So, in fact, when we talk about the Vanis, in the current Olin tradition to the Dhrupad, we have the Dagarvani, you have the Dalhanga tradition of Dhrupad in Bihar, the Betia tradition, still survives. The Vishnupu tradition is gradually dwindling of Bengal. Then you have uh, the temple tradition of Drupal also. 
Uh, these are the current living oral traditions. So that is how we can understand the Vanis through the Geetis. Very briefly about the Gamaka, it comes from the word Gam meaning locomotion, movement. Now, Gamakas are not just specific tonal shakes, heavy tonal shakes. That's a very narrow meaning of Gamaka. Any tonal movement, whether slow or fast or medium, would come under the gamut of Gamakas. So you have a wide range of Gamakas in the oral tradition and even the Sangeet Shastra talks about them in length. In fact, the Gamakas could be temporal, it could be with the intensity of sound, it could be through the phrases na ra na re na ra na no na now this is ullasita a na na re na ra this is Namit, one going in the ascending order, one in the descending order. In the oral tradition, this is called Dhuran and Muran. Dhuran is when you are searching the sound, Muran is to turn back. So you see all these are so beautifully designed and explained to make the music more beautiful and aesthetically fulfilling. There is no end to all these illustrations. About the Banis, there is a beautiful composition of Tan Sen. I'll just recite. Bani charo ke vyavahar sun lije ho gunijane ye vidyasar Raja govarhar Fajadar Khandar Divan Dagur Bakasi Navarahar. Now this is how even the Banis are categorized in this Drupad of Tansen. Uh, uh, I will recite a small self-made composition where I tried to explain the Dagar Vani. Uh, Suralaya bheda ko bakhan Guni jana sab Suralaya bheda ko bakhan This is in Sulta Suralaya bheda ko bakhan Guni jana sab Chanda rasa tal me Ala pagama kabhara Alap Gamaka Vara Suralaya Veda Kobakan Guni Jana Saba Suralaya Veda Kobakan Paragata Gupta Swara Dagura Dura Padame Shruti Gyana Mana Mohe Upajata yaga nita kara Upajata yaga nita kara Suralaya bheda ko Suralaya bheda ko Suralaya bheda ko bakhan